All right, my friends, how you all doing? Welcome back to the channel and welcome to a brand new How To episode. Um, we are going to get into it in a moment. We're going to be talking all things realistic animal shelters today. But essentially, if this is the first time here at my channel, this series is just my hints and tips series where I show you how I do things and hopefully give you a few helpful tips and stuff so you can put them into practice with your builds. And today is something that I get asked a lot about and it is realistic shelters. There's a lot to this um, but today's video is essentially really just going to be the explanation of how I go into it and how I go about the build. But I am going to be making this one of a three part series. Um, so this is a how to, I'm going to explain it all and then I'm going to be doing, doing two let's build togethers where I do a small um, maybe hoof stock animal and a small carnivore uh, of sorts and we're going to do those hard shelters together in those videos one of them will hopefully be later this week and the other one will be next week before we jump into the episode though my friends i just wanted to show off the lovely gifts that i got from um the lovely people at frontier for the planet zoo europe um pack maybe i should have been wearing this hat but i don't want to take the tag off because I just love receiving the gifts. I got one for the Africa pack, didn't I? And now I got one for the Europe DLC. So a massive thank you to Frontier, the devs there, and Dahlia in particular, because she's always the person that gets in touch. She's an absolute gem of a person and uh, really, really appreciate it. But anyway, my friends, enough of that. Let's get into today's episode. Okay, my friends, so let's crack on with today's episode of How To. And obviously, we're going to be talking all things realistic, um, hard shelters, and um, animal buildings, basically, in today's episode. Now, there's lots to this. There really is lots to this. I'm going to try to break it down as simple as possible and just give you all of the sort of hints and tips and the steps that I follow when it comes to building this sort of thing um, in the game. Um, the image on your screen right now, you're going to see there is Four, you can see four um, animal shelters um, uh, and uh, sort of behind the scenes buildings there. Um, I will say that uh, two of them are for hard, uh, hard, um, hoof stock animals. One of them is for a carnivore and the other one is a bit of a mix actually. Um, so um, this is why I've put this little image on screen because you can see the different examples of the um, different types of animal um, buildings and the hard shelters that you can build. Now, as I've already said, this is going to today be part the first part of a three-part um, sort of series of videos that I'm going to put out, hopefully over the next week. Um, because today I'm just going to give you the hints and tips and the steps that I follow and then we're going to do an example of a hoof stock animal and we're going to do an example of a small carnivore animal. The reason I've chosen to do these is I can make them relatively small um, so that the build process is a little bit quicker but obviously do uh, keep an open mind, do use your um, common sense that if you're building something for say a giraffe or an elephant it's going to need to be much much bigger and the steps that I'm going to show you that I follow are probably going to be a bit more in depth and a bit more to it so just keep that in mind that the bigger the animal the more is probably going to need to go into what you're doing so i've given you some examples here on the screen you can see how different each one of those buildings are and the reason for that is every animal's needs are very very different and if we're talking about realism even though it's just a game you've got to think about the animal's needs you've got to think about what it what it needs um, how the zoo staff are going to be able to access said building and give the animal what it needs um, the easiest and best way possible now obviously in Planet Zoo as well, we talk about realism a lot. You know, there's there's some of us out there that like to build realistically. It's probably my bread and butter. It's the thing I like to do the most. But we still got to think about the game's functionality as well. And to build something that looks nice and functions well is what you're really aiming for, basically, gang. So um, that's basically what I'm going to be talking about in today's episode. So before you start building... Here are my tips, ladies and gentlemen, for building your realistic um, animal um, housing units, okay? So, number one is decide on the animal that you're building for first. And the reason I say this is because I've already mentioned it literally moments ago, every animal's needs are different. And because they're different, 
every animal um, housing unit is different because it caters to said animal's needs. Um, you know, even if we're talking about, say, carnivores, for instance, if we're talking about a lion and a hyena, you would think it'd be similar, but believe it or not, it, it's really not. There's there's lots to it. Um, lions need far more room. Um, they need separation units. They need all sorts of things that hyenas don't necessarily need because hyenas and zoos are kept in such small numbers that they don't actually need to be as intricate and stuff like that so um these are the things you really need to, to be looking into animal numbers is a big thing obviously as well because there are some animals that you're going to keep in huge huge um, numbers so your behind the scenes stuff might not need to be uh, you know might not need to worry about it for instance you know like zoos that keep large numbers of deers they don't even really bother having this sort of stuff they just kind of let them roam uh, you know in open fields and things um, whereas an animal like a meerkat or an aardvark or whatever they're going to need a habitat that's got den style uh, indoor areas that are warm with heat lamps um, aardvarks in particular are nocturnal animals so they prefer darker um, dens and stuff like that as well to be built so these are all the little things you need to consider so i would say that choosing your animal first is the first thing next up you obviously identified if it's a carnivore hoof stock uh, you know we're talking about a big cat maybe a dog species or is it a reptile once you know you identify that then you know what stuff you need to research now research is the next thing for me especially when it comes to building a realistic habitat and there's many avenues of research that you can go down to get this right but you're gonna have to go and do some reading you're gonna go and have to get some reference photos um, because without them you're just not going to get a realistic um, habitat slash animal housing right in my opinion now i've said this before in some of the videos there are a number of routes you can go down um, i'm going to list a few of them for you so the first one is try to get hold of some aza pamphlets because they're absolutely amazing they are readily available online you can get them through their website or if you look hard enough you can get them all over the place but if you can get hold of aza pamphlets there's so much detailed information on them about building realistic habitats that you cannot go wrong um, so if you can get hold of them they're absolutely amazing uh, if not there's a a great website that I use um, and this is great for photographs not so much uh, readable information but for the for the photos for the reference photos I use a, a website called Zulex uh, and you can literally type in the animal or the zoo or whatever and it'll bring up loads and loads of images and it'll give you images of stuff from behind the scenes as well as up front uh, as well um, you can go on Google images literally go in Google type in the animal what you're looking for and just you know filter through the images maybe save some of those and you can also use Google Maps um, you won't really be able to see the insides of the buildings uh, you know for this for the inside a site like Zulex is perfect because there's loads of stuff on there but if you're looking for examples of buildings like on the outside and that and Google Images and Google Maps are great on Google Maps I've said this loads of times you can type in a zoo and drop the thing in the zoo on some zoos and you can walk around the zoo and you can have a really good look um, so yeah these are just some of the some of the examples of research you can go into um, but i would if you can if there's information do read it because it will make you understand a bit more and then like i say save loads and loads of reference photos because they will definitely come in handy later on down the line now you don't use reference photos to copy unless you're doing um you know a recreation you don't use them to copy you literally use them as a reference you use them as sort of um a sort of uh, an artist's example of what you're going to be trying to build uh, at the end of the day so you've done you've decided on your animal you've got your research done you've got your reference points i guess now it's time to build isn't it um and that is the next thing we're going to go and talk about ladies and gentlemen so what i'm going to do is use the hyena habitat in tropical wings to kind of explain how i go about building uh this sort of stuff uh, in my zoos basically okay so we've followed all those steps and we're now at that point where we're going to build and i'm now going to give you my hints and tips on how I go about building it now you're gonna see how I build this in the next two videos that I'm gonna be putting out okay I've already said I'm gonna be putting those videos out because I want you to have the opportunity to build along with me so you can see how I do it it's one thing for me to sit here and explain it and some people really like this some people really like things just being explained to them because there are some people out there that are actually very very good builders they're really creative but they just get overwhelmed when they come to actually building stuff 
they're actually amazing at the game they just don't know how to go about it so having some helpful tips and steps to follow is amazing for them whereas you get some people that just are maybe average builders they know they just kind of go in there they throw it all together and they get it but they want it to get better and so that's why I feel like watching someone build that helps them get better because they can learn pieces and stuff to use so that's why I'm doing this as a as a bit of a series and it's something that's been asked for a lot anyway but anyway I'm waffling away so yeah we're ready to build so the way I build and again I'm going to be putting these steps up on the screen okay so that you can kind of get a feel for, for what I do so the way I build my um, animal habitats is I actually build from the inside out and that might sound strange but it makes sense because you can get all your sizing inside correct before you stick your external walls on okay so that's what I do so let's just zoom on in to the hyena habitat so what I mean by inside out is any internal doors windows walls any gates any doors um, all of that has to be done before I stick my internal walls on okay because if you've done your research right you'll know if you need airlocks you'll know if you need windows to view animals before you enter the building you'll know if you need um, heavy duty doors you'll know if you need caged units you'll know if you need all this stuff basically if you've done your research correctly you'll know exactly what you need okay so um, I always build all this stuff first and then once I've built this the second step is to then go and add the additional rooms like my airlocked rooms I'll add them first so what I'm talking about there is if I have any airlocked rooms so basically what I mean by an airlocked room is it's a, a room that stands alone on itself that the animals cannot access and it's a room that you access before access, accessing the animals this is a very popular thing that zoos uh, do and uh, will follow um, mainly because they'll use this room as um, a safety net um, say for instance one of the hyenas had managed to get out the zookeepers have got this room um, to protect themselves uh, that's really important and also um, some of these rooms are seen as washrooms because there are some animals that can pick up human disease and so uh, you'll make sure that you know your, your hands are washed or say for instance like we are at the moment in the middle of a pandemic um, with chimpanzees and gorillas and whatnot zoos are wearing masks at all times uh, just in case you know certain animals can pick up certain diseases so they'll use rooms like that uh, like this for that and also you'll have airlock rooms as well because it'll protect you from when you go out into the habitat it's another room basically that you can use and you can look out and you can see that the animals are locked away before you would enter the habitat we're talking about realism at the end of the day and these are all the things you have to consider when it comes to building a realistic um you know uh, habitat and the big thing we're talking about today obviously is realistic animal shelters um so yeah that's the next thing i do is i make sure all of the rooms are done and dusted um and then we move on to the next step and the next step is to start putting my external walls on okay so i i build the highly detailed uh, my friends as you all know and so these are actually double thick walls the, none of this is um none of this is grid pieced and i find it easier to build off off of uh, off of a, an official grid basically i just use all of the other pieces that you can there probably are a few grid pieces in there but not many because i just find it easier it's just that you've got more freedom so what i will do like i say is i'll start putting all the external walls and all the external sort of details on you know like doors and things like that so i can get all my sizing and things like that uh, in um, so all of the walls would go on so that's that'll be a job done and the next step will be detailing the building so detailing the main building so as you can see all these wooden planks all these wooden bits um, and you'll know what sort of style you want to go for because you'll know what animal you're using and your habitat hopefully you will have an idea of what you're going to do for that so you get all your details on the next step after that is i'll start doing the roof now what i will tell you now um, is when you do your roof separate your roof unit from your main building unit and i say this for a very very good reason okay and that's because if you've made any mistakes inside your building it's so much easier to be able to just select the roof group and then drag it to the side 
work on what you need to do to and drag it back. Whereas if it's all in one group, you're gonna have to delete all your ceiling, all your roof off just to be able to get inside to do what you need to do. Otherwise, you're gonna be trying to build inside uh, in this uh, in this view here, you're going to be trying to like build inside here, and it's a bit tight, and it's it's just not easy. Whereas if you take the whole roof off, it's really easy for you to build inside. I think that's a, that's a really good tip when it comes to that. But yeah, like I say, the next stage would be to start building your ceilings um, and getting your roof all done. And then once your roof's done, you can do all of your details on your roof. So anything like solar panels. Uh, ventilation, cameras, finishing off windows because hopefully by then you would have got all of this done and dusted. And then when that's done, you're done, basically, gang. That is that is my way of building these habitats, uh, sorry, these shelters. It's just the easiest way, it makes the most sense and it really, really flows. Um, and like I say, if you're gonna, if it depends how, how intricate and how detailed you're gonna go. Um, you know, like for instance, this one, it's it's a straight up it's a straight up walk in walk out okay there's not much there's not much else to it it really really isn't gang they walk in and you know there's um you know they got their bedded areas um we've got a separation one in the middle and then we've got this one over here but honestly there really really isn't too much to this uh, at the end of the day whereas if i was to fly over quickly to the fennec box you're going to see that there a lot more went into this one so we've got this uh, this here and uh, this goes two ways it goes into an indoor area and then it goes into their behind the scenes uh, area back here we go into um you know go about making sure all of this is right and uh, you know we had to have a separate room for it and so there was much more that went into it much more research and much more thinking and building basically so no animals the same is essentially what i'm trying to say but every single one of my um habs and my shelters are built this way because it just makes the most sense um and then once you've done that it's the perfect time in my opinion then to build your habitat because you it's a great way to it's a great place to start from it really really is a great place to start from having your animal shelter all built and done because you know where your exit doors are going to be for your animals you know where your entry exit doors are going to be for the, for your zookeepers um, so you can kind of then get an idea on space which is really really cool you'll know as well then if you want to have anything connected to said building you know like i've just shown you this is an example of an area that our guests can go to that's actually connected to the side of our animal shelter you wouldn't know it other than the door in there you wouldn't know it but it's just something that you've got to think about. Um, I'll give you, I'll show you an example of um, of um, a hoof stock animal though. So just so you can kind of get an idea of the differences as well. So I'll just show you, um, I'll show you these guys. Now we haven't had to be anywhere near as worried about the safety um, because uh, you know, Obviously, zookeepers would have to think about safety, like warthogs, for instance. Like a warthog can be an aggressive animal. Um, same way I'm sure a gemsbot can be. They've got horns. That's there's danger there, which is why zookeepers will shut animals outside. Why they work? Why they clean up? They don't really want the animals there. Whereas you'll get some animals you know in zoos like a tapir for instance that are like big puppy dogs um, and it's unbelievable still got to be safe but zookeepers probably feel a bit safer around that sort of thing especially animals that have been brought up in captivity because they're far more used to the zookeepers anyway but um anyway to cut a long story short you can see just how different this habitat is and so my research has had to be different and my thought process has had to be different what different things are we going to need how the door's going to work how big do these rooms need to be do i I need more than one um, and all these little things and that's why I you know was saying you need to decide on your animals first before moving on and you know just jumping in and building because you want to get that research done and you want to get all of that in place before really cracking on and trying to build you know a realistic shelter and that's the thing we're talking about realism if we were just talking about building animal shelters i can show you how to make really basic animal shelter that would do the job in the game but because we're talking about realism we want it to feel like this is something that could exist 
um, you know, we've had to we've had to look at it from a very very different kind of perspective. Here's the Warthog one. It's a much lower, smaller building. Um, it's the style I went with. But as you can see, we've got a separate access point for our zookeepers over here, and it's a safety station just to keep them separated. Um, why they shut the animals out and whatnot. So. You know, it's just these are all the little things you've got to consider. And the other things as well that you've got to consider, this is just kind of like an extra tip, an extra little thing. I'm not going to put this on any sort of short list or whatever on the screen. But um, think about yards as well that could go alongside um, your your animal shelters, you know, behind the scenes stuff. Um, because that's a big thing, you know, you've got to think about not only how it's going to work with your habitat, that's the most important thing because, you know, your animals are what your guests see. They're the bits that we enjoy as well as Planet Zoo builders. They're the bits we enjoy the most. But if you're like me and you're going for realism and you do build behind the scenes, you've got to think about how is this going to work behind the scenes alongside other buildings? Is it going to be too close to an animal that we don't want it to be close to? Uh, you know, like for instance, this is a really good example, and this was something I was um, I was told a while ago, is that they won't put cheetahs and uh, lions too close together um, with their housing units because if a cheetah can smell a lion, it literally lives its life in fear. Don't they just don't? Obviously, they, 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 there's certain animals that are hardwired to be scared of other animals. It's just the way they are. Even even captive bred cheetahs cannot handle being too close to lions, and that is a that's a real thing. I was actually told that by someone who worked um, as a zookeeper at a zoo. Like, there's just some animals that they have to be really, really select and really careful about. Um, and so you've got to think about this as well. So if you've done your research right, you'll be able to work your backstage areas out perfectly as well. Um, I know that's kind of predator prey here but i've left enough space they can't really see each other it's one of those things you can kind of get away with it but these are all the little things that you need to think about my friends and that's that's really it today that's really it there isn't much more for me to talk about where this little episode is concerned um they're just the steps i follow on you know getting my getting my um you know hard shelters ready and then actually going about building them that's literally how i do it and so there you have it, my friends. We're done and dusted for another how-to episode. I do hope that at least one or two of you take a few of those hints and tips away, even if you're just kind of following the steps that I'm doing and it helps you massively to kind of absolutely smash it out of the park with your zoo, then that would be amazing. I, I love doing these videos on the realism because that's kind of my area of expertise, if you want to call it that. And I want to help people kind of get to the level that I feel like I'm getting to. There, There's people in the community, okay? Goran, I'm looking at you. Lida, I'm looking at you. That are head and shoulders above me. They're crazy, crazy people. But, um, you know, if I was if I was building stuff like Lida does, using the amount of pieces he does, I'd break my PC probably. I don't know how he hasn't broken his. But anyway, there are other people out there is essentially what I'm trying to say. So go and check them out as well. Because if realism's your jam, there are there are three people off the top of my head that I think you should go and check out. Lida's one of them. Just Goran's another and the the one and only um you know zwed even is the other and i think you should just go and check those guys out as well as me because they're all doing amazing stuff i think i'm the only one doing tutorials lider's doing an amazing series where he's doing this research done where he just tells you exactly how to build a, a realistic habitat from start to finish but yeah i think i'm the only one doing this sort of thing but do go check those guys out as well i'm giving props because it's christmas okay and that's my gift to them Lovely job. Anyway, my friends, I'm done and dusted. If you're new around here, um, please consider hitting that subscribe button. It'd be very much appreciated. I wanted to get to 3,000 before Christmas. I don't think that's going to happen, but we, we got close, okay? We got really, really close. And your support this year has been absolutely amazing. Drop a like on the video if you've enjoyed it as well. That would be very much appreciated by me. It's the best way not only to support this video, the series, but the channel. The more likes, the more people see it, believe it or not. That's how YouTube works. Anyway, my friends, check out that description box below as well. It's got all the links to all the stuff I talked about today. And it can be really, really helpful. But until the next one, stay safe, stay humble. And I will see you real, real soon.